Here at St Andrews and St Brides, the Pupil Council is important for the pupil voice to be heard. However, recently, the issue has been raised that the pupils, in fact, get little say in what is discussed at meetings. We first spoke to Lewis, an SA pupil here and secretary to the Pupil Council. Since the Pupil Council started, how much progress do you think the Council has made? Uh, I think they've done pretty well uh, in the tasks that they've been given and that they have displayed a lot of opinion in the meetings. But uh, personally, I've not really been asked to bring anything up at meetings by really anyone. How much opportunity do the pupils get to choose what topics are discussed at the meetings? Um, well, personally, I don't really think we get much because what happens is we get called to a meeting and then when we arrive at the meeting, we get told what we're going to discuss at uh, the meeting. For example, at one point we get uh, tasked with discussing what makes a happy, health, healthy learning environment and what makes, the, what makes the school good and what we can do to make the school better. How could this be addressed? Uh, well, currently, uh, when we go into meetings, we're just told what we're doing. So I think that maybe prior to the meetings, uh, the pupils should be asked what they want to talk about. However, there are certain things that we've been uh, told that we're not allowed to talk about. For example, cafeteria. We have a list as long as there are uh, the people complaining about the cafeteria, but we're not allowed to talk about it. We then spoke to S3 Head of Year, Mr Sloy, who often chairs meetings at the Pupil Council. Since the Pupil Council started, how much progress do you think the Council's made? I believe since November 2014 when the Pupil Council came into operation, I believe it's made outstanding progress. The reason I say that is that before then there was no formal way for pupils to voice their concerns or offer improvements. And some of those improvements we've been able to act on and some it's been impossible to. Some of the things we've acted on are, for example, improving the conditions within the toilets, more soap, more um, paper towels, removing those barriers to the seating at the cafeteria, introducing a water fountain and bringing back the waffles to the cafeteria, which was a very, very popular, uh, popular decision that we made back a couple of months ago. How do we ensure pupils are able to put forward their own ideas from the agenda? I think it's important that the pupils have to get together within their own RMCE class before the calendar of meetings is produced and they have to put forward everything they would like discussed. They then have to then take it to the head of the, of the pupil council and try and negotiate with the head of the pupil council to say, in a particular meeting we would like a, B and C spoken about, or they could ask for a particular meeting in a month to say we would like that to be given over to the pupils. But I think that has to be agreed on and the pupils really have to be quite forceful and say it is our pupil council, we would like our ideas brought forward, but it's important that we set the agenda for some of these meetings. In conclusion, there is a clear agreement that the Pupil Council has made good progress within the school since its reintroduction. However, the pupils should be given a, more of a say with regards to the agenda. And both Lewis and Mr Sloyle offered good suggestions which should be introduced in the future. This is Megan reporting for the BBC School News Report.